All right, so um, this would be questions and uh, open discussion regarding bamboo. And maybe we can do a little intro where we are here at Ekava, this amazing, I think it's the open space you guys have at Ekava, um, or one of the first buildings, I'm guessing. <laughs> well, okay, so this is our house. We call it the watershed house. This is where Al, Saskia, and I live. Oh, And uh, cool. <laughs> we invite the group here today. And normally, normally, you know, there, there's a there's a slightly bigger house which is called Sona House where we have the kind of more the, the the kind of group facilities and this one is our our very own home. Oh, oh so awesome, awesome! I we see the light coming from top, right? Ooh, yeah, so wow! The green roof and and the green roof kind of climbs into the house via some big openings in the in the central space, and then it's essentially a quite straightforward bamboo construction with yeah. poles and <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful we, because um... you're like submerged in, in in nature from there's like no inside and outside exactly exactly so it's a lot about making the most of the opportunity of having an architecture that's open there's no walls no doors um architecture becomes a very big uh hat you can say a big roof and uh, the green roof allows for a lot of, um, of um, it's somehow a, a thermal insulator. So this space is actually quite fresh. Although out there, you can probably see there's, there's hot sunshine and it, it's in a hot tropical day out there. And here it's, it's relatively fresh. And, um, and so we have a kind of more social area uh, up here. And then one goes down some steps and we have a whole separate structure, which is the bedroom. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Really, <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it, you put some. I think uh, it's mostly guadua, right, from the farm right there, from the finca. Yeah, guala angustifolia. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we have some very old bamboo groves, and it's been a joy to to connect with them as a usable material, but also to expand them. Yeah. And a lot of what you showed us today is very inspiring as well for what you know things to come like we really see a, a, a huge potential in expanding the bamboo groves and kind of regenerating what you hear exactly in this valley where we are there used to be something like 50 hectares of bamboo groves and now it's down to probably two or three hectares over the last 50 years wow. it's been you know down and we kind of want to bring it up again to those high levels of, of like many many hectares of bamboo groves right here in this in this valley that would be awesome if you guys are able i'm happy also to, to to try to help i have some ideas some contacts maybe which may um later uh be of of any use um it's like parallel thing um because this is like i mean from two to 50 is like quite some work and organization and uh yeah yeah, yeah we, we we've been on a big learning process and and it's still a, a project in the future. Like we've started and we've actually shared with the group that's here for the Bamboo Lab our current efforts and also our lessons. And there's still, yeah, a lot of work ahead to be able to get there to, a, you know, a, a consolidated, a large scale bamboo grove of, of, of many hectares. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, but I mean, you guys are doing amazing stuff in, in so short time also. I mean, uh, that's another detail, right? <laughs> so. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're big fans of you as well and your work. Well, thank you. I'm just trying to to inspire other people with amazing work from from others mostly. <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, let's get more people using bamboo, right? So, um, yeah. you guys have any um, like specific questions or or things which uh, you want to like add regarding the this general bamboo presentation, maybe? Hi there. Do you hear JJ? Um, a little bit. Yeah, just yeah. Oh, do I? I want to go closer, maybe. Yeah, please. Well, I can grab the computer. Yeah. I don't know what it matters. The story that when you take like a a piece of bamboo to to plant it somewhere else, mm -hmm. uh, the big bamboo, uh, cultivo, uh, grove, grove, where you take it. 
Mm -hmm. And if you take it to another place of the world, and if it dies, mm -hmm. the bamboo plantation that you took with you will also die? Is that true? Have you heard of anything about that? I don't know if I may, <laughs> you understand. Yeah, I think if I, I have do. Heard of that, yeah. It's, it's about the DNA, basically, of the bamboo plant. So, um, um, basically... <laughs> it has to do, it, it's a bit complex maybe, but um, it's a good question. <laughs> so um, basically, each bamboo has like an own lifespan. We're talking about 70 or 140 years lifespan, right? So the bamboo grows, and after those 140 years, for example, in, in the longest living um, example, it will flourish, and then it dies, and then all the seeds that has... I have flourished like before will grow again within the next four or five years. But all the bamboo being from that species will die before the other grow. So um, I think that has to do with the question you, you mentioned before, right? Yeah. Oh, it was a story I heard once and I didn't really understand how it worked because uh, someone said that if I take a bamboo from Asia and bring mm -hmm. it to Colombia and mm -hmm. the bamboo in Asia dies, my bamboo will also die. So Yeah, this has to do with the DNA. Basically, in the DNA, the, the, it's not so, well, it has to do with, ideally we would know when the flowering of the bamboo was, which we're planting. So we know this bamboo I'm planting will, uh, has flourished like, let's say, 30 years ago and it has a lifespan of, let's say, 140 years. So 30 minus 140 uh, equal uh, the time the bamboo will live, right? Because okay. they have their time, like us humans, let's say we have between 60 and 90, we live, right? <laughs> Ideally. <laughs> and the bamboo is the same thing. Depending what bamboo, they have longer or shorter lifespan. Thank yeah? you. So if you get a bamboo, for example, from Asia or, or seeds, try to get the information if the pe a person selling it or giving it to you knows how, how, how or when the bamboo flourished. That will help you to understand um, and, and research how long it takes until it flourishes again. But basically, just think about this. Uh, the bamboo uh, uses this technique to basically to, to restart the system, right? Um, because uh, being grass, it, it probably could grow endlessly, but maybe that would not be healthy. That's why it has like a restart after so and so many years where it flourishes, it puts all those seeds around, and then all this bamboo which has lived for so long just dies, and the seeds which uh, catch uh, enough uh, grows, they grow again, and then there is even probably more bamboo, but we have to wait between four and six years until that seed bamboo is again a mature bamboo. Thank you for the question. It's, it's, at the beginning, I think it's, it's kind of complex to, to understand, also because the knowledge of bamboo is, there is some knowledge there, um, but I, I would dare to say it's, it's not quite everything there and, and, and the knowledge is not, um, it's not black and white either. So there is some ancestral knowledge and there is some scientific knowledge and it's not always, <laughs> it doesn't always totally match, you know, <laughs> but that makes it interesting. Yeah, JJ, I have another question. Yes, please. It's really a question that we hear from a lot of people that we speak with in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, in Europe, in the UK, in places like that, there are many, many uh, bamboo fans. And yet bamboo is not um, indigenous to the European continent. Yep. Um, and I've heard you speak about things like the Bamboo Expo in Germany, and there's a bamboo planting, a huge bamboo planting project in Portugal that you've mentioned to us and things like that. Yeah. Uh, what would be your advice to people in Europe who are passionate about bamboo, Europe, UK, uh, you know, and those kind of uh, seasonal climates in the Northern Hemisphere? Um, what, what would you advise to, I don't know, young architects or other people interested in working with bamboo in those climates? Um, 
yeah what would be your advice for them well uh i would i would do if i if i would be able i would do world tour <laughs> i would go to latam i would go to asia and try to learn to understand how how those places uh, make use of bamboo today and in the past and what's happening there and then at the end <laughs> i would go to europe i would go to um uh, portugal where uh, you have the huge bamboo plantation i would go to greece where others are starting also bamboo plantations i would go to france where um the state is kind of sponsoring you if you plant bamboo um also in i think um belgium the same situation so people are starting to or like farmers are starting to diversify um let's say they have uh, i don't know let's say 50 hectares of classic crops like corn and uh, uh potatoes and stuff like that right and now they're starting with one and two and three and four and five hectares with bamboo between their crops so this is highly interesting but it has a lot to do with politics too because of course uh, labor is expensive machines are expensive we're talking about europe it's a different climate and all that um yeah but but it, it i think it would help if if the person is, has the possibilities to travel i would really do latam i would go to asia because both have very different realities um and you have a lot of international let's say um architects who have done um uh, uh, like a broad different uh, buildings with bamboo which also help to 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 open the mind out of this classic like let's say modern architecture or or whatever i mean when you're in asia you can go to china they have so much uh, stuff on going there also with the uh, timbers uh, like structural uh, timber bamboo they're doing now uh, houses with they just did a house with six floors um with a, a seb with a structured engineered bamboo i mean six floors you know bamboo wow <laughs> amazing and in europe they wow. did i think six floors a tall house with a timber so things are changing and it's getting interesting because um if you look at the footprint the water footprint carbon footprint energy footprint all there for sure bamboo is the king and all the others are are somewhere low very low <laughs> like really low down um so yeah um yeah hi jj can i ask a question yes please uh, i can't see you um maybe you can Hi there. How are you, JJ? My name I'm is great. Gregory. How are you? Great to see you, Gregory. I'm happy to be here with you guys. <laughs> You're so cool. I'm going to listen to your podcast on my next flights. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I, so, is this too loud? Is this loud enough? Fantastic. <laughs> uh, so, say I go to Donstadt in Germany. Are they? To, I hear you talking about structural engineering. Is anybody? Is anybody selectively breeding bamboo for a seasonal northern climate? First part of my question. Second part, are there any genetic uh, engineering experiments along the same line? Maybe not even just for different seasons or different areas, but for different uses. For instance, in a lot of cases, we use a lot of ethanol derived from maize. Mm -hmm. Is there anything similar like in the world of bamboo? Is is anybody in Germany talking about that when I go? No, specifically, <laughs> not specifically, but um basically to the first question, um I I do have an answer. <laughs> so, um if you think I knew of you would, JJ, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you think of of bamboo, um the one of the trick is to find the bamboo that grows in the climate, right? Now um you may have seen photos of bamboo in China, bamboo forest covered with like half a meter and a meter of snow, right? Um so basically we're talking there about a endemic Chinese uh, philostachys uh, mosso bamboo which uh, very well is adapting right now in uh, in um Portugal. So I don't think Portugal has lots of snow <laughs> but <laughs> still it's it's the one they have growing as 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 I know in um, Portugal and in France 
In Greece, I think um, they planted something different. Um, regarding genetics, now specifically, um, uh, there are some bigger organizations who, who are like um, reproducing bamboo on a lab scale. So with the pipette, really, like they can reproduce uh, thousands of bamboo per day, um, ten thousands. Uh, I don't have. I have another podcast um, with um, one of them from Indonesia, and we have the numbers there. I can't remember it, but it's like amazing, because manual reproduction of bamboo is slow, to be honest. So you want like lab reproduction. But your question was regarding genetics. Now. Um, there is some people are uh, working or playing around with genetics. <laughs> um, I'm aware of that, but not specifically now in in, in Germany at all, because uh, in Germany they have the politics is is not about planting bamboo. It's specifically, as I know, it's, it's Portugal, France, um, and, um, and and Greece. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a very political thing right now in Europe. Um, as soon as they run out of uh, uh, timber wood or, or they, they start uh, like measuring how much uh, the carbon footprint and, and energy footprint is of the wood, maybe they'll, they'll have more pressure to use more bamboo. <laughs> Are you saying there's, there's a lot of different politics in Europe? This is mind blowing to an American. Yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, Thank you. I, in Florida, I know also, speaking of the U.S., uh, in, in Florida, um, they're planting giant bamboo on an industrial scale. Um, uh, it's more of a monoculture. But, of course, the climate is, is, is like uh, semi-humid there, so it works well. Um, and uh, it's on a large scale. But, yeah, uh, politics is a rather sad topic nowadays. <laughs> So let's stick to the bamboo, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, no, but it's it's actually genetics. Also, thinking of uh, uh, your your question, it's an interesting thing because um, we're right now we're more more focusing on like trying to grow local bamboo, like thinking of the European, right? Um, and the European also like would like to use more of the guadua, so the Latin American bamboo, but most uh, it's easier to to import the chinese bamboo right now because they have this huge industry so latin america is not yet there um we don't have this industry uh, also because of china because they produce the machines <laughs> they produce the bamboo and uh, they're well organized and have like really a, a clear uh, vision and mission uh, regarding bamboo where they want to go right and latin america is not yet is a little bit um, um, not so well organized, let's say, <laughs> in this regard. <laughs> um, but has amazing potential, of course, here too, because uh, there is one guy in Colombia. He has, um, he's, I think, Belgium, but he is planting bamboo like crazy there, and he planted tons of also Asian bamboo in Colombia and Chinese bamboo, and it's growing, you know? It's growing. It grows. <laughs> bamboo is one of the plants which really adapts almost everywhere. Unless you're doing like the, 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 the cold weather bamboo in the, in the desert or the other way around, which would not make sense, of course. But it adapts in super poor soil. It adapts in, in like uh, climate, in extreme climate with lots of uh, rain and, and, and almost no rain. So um, it, it's highly adaptable. Um, yeah. I have a quick question. Uh, yes. Hello, thanks for the thanks for the talk. Uh, I have a quick question, just on the same topic. And um, as you were saying about mixing, taking a bamboo from Asia and growing it in South America, or taking bamboo from well South America and trying to grow it in Europe. And I was wondering, maybe there's studies, and maybe is there any issues that that's causing in terms of the ecosystems? The established ecosystems have been introduced, uh, maybe an alien uh, species. Because I, I believe in England, uh, bamboo is causing a bit of problems because the decorative, um, uh, de de or what's the word? The aesthetic. Ornamental. 
ornamental bamboo grows that people had uh, planted in their gardens have escaped and causing a bit of havoc in it's in a the, good point uh, well yeah. if you plant running bamboo for example in in your garden which is let's say 50 square feet and and you have another neighbor like uh, let's say uh, 10 meters away maybe it's not the smartest thing to do right <laughs> Now there there is clumping bamboo also for uh, uh, like cold weather. Um, uh, most of the clumping bamboo is is tropical, but not all of it. And most of the running bamboo is like for colder weather. But uh, there are other techniques where you can like uh, uh, build like um, like fencing inside of the soil for the bamboo so it can't escape. <laughs> so you're controlling the bamboo, <laughs> um, and a, a lot of things. Um, regarding the other question, it's, it's a, a, almost a philosophical question if you think of introducing things from other places because, I mean, on, on one side, everything we know today or we're using today has been introduced from somewhere. For example, potato comes from Peru. And in Europe, I know many countries where if you have no potato, uh, people uh, wouldn't know what to eat nowadays. <laughs> and maybe before uh, uh, the Europeans uh, uh, officially um, uh, found uh, Latin America, uh, uh, we don't know anymore what they ate. They had other food. And for example, the chicken comes from India. And everywhere now we have chicken. And it's like the number one cheapest food, like meat food. Uh, around the world, right? But it's it's from India. Um, same thing with the horses. Uh, we have horses everywhere. Uh, ba basically, I think most of the horses come from uh, the the Arab uh, region, um, and and then they've been like breeding and stuff like that. Same thing with the dogs, etc., um, etc. Et Pigeons um, and a lot of other stuff. Like for example, the English grass. Like the the uh, el pasto, same thing. It's like everybody wants to have a, a mini golf a grass in, in on their front yard, <laughs> but uh, does it <laughs> does it make sense? Is it smart? Um, I would say probably in that specific situation, no. There are better um, uh, solutions um, for soil cover because basically what you're doing with the grass is soil cover. So it depends back to your question. It depends a little bit. What do you want to achieve? What's your goal? Uh, do you want bamboo for aesthetics? Are you planting it in, in like, uh, in your apartment, in your garden or, or somewhere outside? Um, how big, how tall, uh, is it allowed to grow? What species is it going to be? Because we're talking about a, a universe of 1,500 different species. The smallest bamboo is about this tall. It's a, a, a nano. It's a, it's a dwarf bamboo. And the tallest bamboo is 30 meters. And it's the same. It's, it's bamboo. It's a bamboo family. So <laughs> it's like the humans, right? We come in every color and size, and 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 uh, some are smart and and some not, and some speak a lot and and some not, and etc. Right? So <laughs> some have lots of hair and other have no hair. <laughs> the same thing with the bamboo. Um, <laughs> so I think it is possible. It is something to think about and and do good research regarding current issues regarding how legal it is in the example of England for example um, uh, because of the density for example of people living together you don't ha want to have issues with your neighbors neighbors are super important <laughs> they live around you and you live around them so basically they're your environment <laughs> like uh, uh, literally <laughs> um, and um, it, it's about researching and really thinking um, how can I use... It's about first knowing what can the bamboo do, right? And, and, and thinking like re-thinking um, uh, like with the knowledge you guys have right now regarding bamboo, you know 99% more than most people. You know that there are like so many um, um, things that bamboo affects positively. 
Of course, there are always issues. One issue, for example, guadua thorny bamboo, go and harvest that and show me your fingers after that, right? <laughs> it's going to be really, uh, it's going to be ugly because they're like four to two centimeters long thorns and, and, and it's not nice. <laughs> so they're always both sides, right? Um, but um, I mean, you can wear gloves and you can try to cut them and etc. So it's all about managing it and, and try to, um, you're trying to know what you do and, and, and um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Ricardo. Ricardo again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the talk. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, just, I, just have, I just have a question. Um, I, I have been studying hemp for about five years mm -hmm. and all, all the things that... Uh, for, all the things that you have said, I see it as well in that plant. So just to know about, like, what is your opinion on how, if I want to make a sharp of comparison between hemp and bamboo, what mm -hmm. would you say? Because I'm, I'm just learning about bamboo, and if I have to make a table about the both of them, how would you say, like, what are the main difference between them, or what are the, the main similarities between them, no? Like, because for me, all that you say bamboo is, is the kind of equal to, to hemp, no? So, yeah, that's yeah. my question. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, my knowledge in hemp is, is uh, quite uh, limited uh, compared to my low knowledge in bamboo. Um, um, and also hemp for me is, is kind of a bit technical because you have like the THC hemp and the one without THC, right? Which was used like historically for uh, ropes and uh, there was like a huge industry for that. And then also because of uh, political uh, situation and, and, and business, uh, they like made the hemp with has, which has THC illegal. And now depending on where you are and uh, you need like a license or you can only use the one without THC and all that. So um, from the legal uh, uh, reality, I think hemp is a little bit more uh, technical, right? Than bamboo where um, I think it's, it's, it's much more legal. <laughs> Uh, broadly also available uh, we're talking um, hemp is also like more like a, a, a typical I think plant um, how, how tall does hemp get like three meters something like that it does restore the soil it does have many uh, interesting aspects also on um, health of course um, um, but it, it, it doesn't get, I don't think it gets over uh, four to five meters tall if like maximum or, or, or so. Um, regarding building material in specific, um, yeah, you could, you could probably do the, the hemp house with some uh, also um, um, like um, transform, or you could use hemp like almost naturally or transform hemp for uh, insulation, for construction, fire reduction and all that. So um, ideally you would do like a, a mix of uh, bamboo and, and hemp, each one of them depending on their uh, best uh, strength probably. Like, like bamboo using the poles, having their flexibility and, and, and that, and the hemp maybe for fire reduction, um, where I think bamboo <laughs> does burn very well. <laughs> so uh, that's not uh, comparable. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, um, thinking of food, hemp also is highly uh, medical. Um, I don't know if it has silica, as bamboo too. Probably it has other chemical um, ingredients. Um, so um, yeah, I don't know. Is your question like more general or more for construction or more? like in case of like uh, planting or using it in, in like a polyculture in, in on what like from what perspective Ricardo is your your question I think what's more general but that now that you say I think I was thinking more about the agricultural part like the thing like growing no like can you grow hemp and bamboo uh, at the same time because the two of them grow very fast the difference is one is four months the other one is six years and like but also like can you do like permaculture design with bamboo inside like or for i seen you put some charts like a forest um yeah like i don't know you can put like tr fruit trees like inside the bamboos nothing like that yeah, yeah the thing so, is basically 
with bamboo and hemp, for example, the hemp, I'm not sure, I think it's three to four meters. We're talking about height. So basically- The tallest has been six meters. Okay, six meters. So six meters. So the big difference there, thinking of fruit forests is um, depending on your crop. Uh, for example, if you're growing a classic coffee, it needs this much amount of, of, of sun, right? Direct sunlight. Um, and the coffee plant, if, if you crop it, you're going to keep it like two to maximum three meters tall, right? Now, if you do um, shade coffee, you want shade. So um, you need something which is taller than the three meters because you want to create some shade for the coffee. Um, so it depends a little bit on the... Um, on the, the polyculture you're going to grow, how much shade or, or direct sunlight it needs. Um, also, I don't know how much sunlight the, the hemp plant needs. I think they do need quite some sunlight. I don't think they will grow below shade. Or how is that, Ricardo? If you want it for construction, you need a lot of sun. Okay, so sun makes them grow faster, stronger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so th there you would have to consider basically maybe if you use bamboo, use it like um, like on the sides or or like like twenty or thirty meters away from the hemp, you know, and um, and like that, where you create like different zones within the the polyculture, but don't plant the hemp then like too near to the bamboo because of the topic of, of the bamboo is going to absorb most of the direct sunlight and it's going to create a new ecosystem which is about 10 to 15 degrees fresher than where you do not have the bamboo. Okay, okay. Um, it's going to help with the water. So I understand hemp is not a C4 class. So I think hemp consumes a little bit more water than bamboo. I'm not sure about that. Maybe you have some information there in the vegetation part it, it does but it, it has a, some is it helps the the roots helps a lot because it can go like two three to four meters down like it can yeah go down very down yeah but i don't know precisely the number of, of liters that it needs for the growth yeah maybe one thing which could be interesting if you're thinking of polyculture agriculture setup use hemp use bamboo, maybe not the giant bamboo, maybe um, some guadua or some smaller bamboo and add the vetiver grass because the vetiver grass will, will uh, highly en enhance the nutrients in the soil, has like um, six to 12 meters of, of roots. So really lots of roots and it's just two meters tall. Um, and the vetiver grass helps to, to boost the soil. So you want a healthy soil, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Have you, have you heard about vetiver? No, I haven't. It's a great uh, thing. Check it. Vetiver. vetiver grass, really high. I don't know if you have at Ekava vetiver, but it's, if, if you can get your hands on vetiver seeds, normally it's a live yeah. seed. You plant and then you reproduce from the same plant. It really, it's, it's, it's magical for poor soils. And uh, I've used that and bamboo, um, those two together, because the vetiver grass within one year, it's boosting. The bamboo needs like the four to six years to really be mature, of course, because it's a huge, a huge grass. Three grasses in them. The, with the system, no? The vertin, the hemp, and the bamboo, there are three grasses. Is hemp considered a grass too? Yeah, it's a grass. Oh. It's mostly a grass. That's cool. It's between a plant and a grass, and it's a, and it can be in the same plant. You can have female and, and male. Male. Yeah. yeah. So it can reproduce itself as many times as it wants. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's another world. The whole hemp, hemp thing, but it's interesting. It's also grass. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, add if you think agriculture, polyculture. Um, um, think about vetiver if you can get your hands on it. It's from India, by yeah. the way. <laughs> But uh, it works everywhere where you have this tropical thing. It, it has lots of positive things too. Uh, it's, uh, if, uh, for example, if you have a neighbor who's uh, um, like setting fire on his land, the vetiver grass will stop the fire 
because it has oils in there and those oils will like slow down the fire and the fire will stop where the vetiver is. Uh, vetiver grass is the number one raw uh, ingredient needed for the uh, perfume industry because it's so strong and those, this strong thing attracts the nutrients. You want the nutrients in the soil to, to, to be like a highway. Think of a highway. <laughs> but instead of cars, you have the microorganism going up and down, uh, bringing the nutrients, bringing minerals and all this thing. That's the best soil you can get. And in, in such a soil, you can grow uh, food trees, you can grow bamboo and everything uh, grows uh, better again. <laughs> Thank you, Yeye. You're very welcome, Ricardo. Well, I have one more question, and I wonder if there's any other question. We're probably reaching kind of and but um, the 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 last question I had was you mentioned something around environmental services and the economy of environmental services. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people that might listen to you or in your podcast, or I can think of loads of people in Colombia now that are passionate about bamboo might be think about regenerating a bamboo grove, things like that. And what, what um, possibilities are there out there that you can know of that uh, are like funds that, that, that might help people that want to regenerate bamboo groves or, or create bamboo groves? Yeah. Are you aware of these programs? Are they easy to apply to? Is it quite a complex kind of uh, territory? Um, do you need a, a scale? Like, do you need like a thousand hectares to, 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 to be eligible for these things? Like, yeah, what's your uh, knowledge of this kind of panorama? Okay, that's a, a great question. <laughs> um, basically, from my knowledge, um, in speaking of LATAM, not Europe, Europe is a bit different because every country has its very specific politics. And for example, in France, uh, the government will help you. In Belgium, it's like this, and et cetera, et cetera. So, but we're here in LATAM. So in LATAM, in Latin America, um, it's more like uh, organizations or, or, or business which, um, which apply this um, uh, right now. So um, we're thinking, we're talking about um, uh, business which are focusing on reforestation and then on thinking on um, uh, carbon sequestration and um, uh, regenerating uh, forests. And, and trying to uh, create value out of that, right? So um, those organizations are mostly um, uh, funded by uh, investors. So they have to seek for investors, so people who wanna put money and, and, and uh, basically um, earn more money out of that. <laughs> yeah, so um, there is like out of, I mean, ideally, you could like apply and say, "Hey, we're doing, uh, we're improving the soil again. Uh, we're uh, regreening uh, the place. We're uh, improving the river again because we have no more erosion. We're planting bamboo. Um, please, some monies, some bamboo." <laughs> but uh, uh, sadly, um, no, uh, because also <laughs> most don't understand really what bamboo is. So uh, let's talk about uh, WWWVVF or, or Greenpeace or all those big organizations. Um, I think they, the bamboo, they don't have bamboo yet on their radar, you know? Um, uh, so um, it's, it's not yet there. Um, but I mean, hey, I'm interested if, if uh, there are any ideas there, how we can like gain their attention and um, and see what we can do um, help people uh, uh, like ask for grants for example regarding bamboo um, regarding specific bamboo uh, growth projects in in latam for example that would be so amazing that would like boost the use of bamboo because it would simplify things right now basically you have to fund that yourself and it's not just the funding. One challenge is the money. The other challenge right now is where do I get the bamboo seeds? <laughs> if I grow them myself, I need a minimum time span of about three to six months 
where I harvest the bamboo, I, I cut the seedlings which have the nodes, I put them in the bags with the soil, I create some uh, root, um, root enhancer from sugar and whatever, and, and then I hope that I get about 80% or whatever of, of those to grow, right? So we're talking about energy, we're talking about time, and of course, uh, also you need you need the uh, money to do that, and that's the plants. The plants is I don't know how the situation is in Colombia or in other places, but it's it's a tricky part and it's a key part of planting bamboo. We need the plants, <laughs> and it's not that easy. Now, if I have a plant somewhere, or you have a plant in Colombia, and you want to send it to Panama, it's going to be like oh, but you have to pass the aduana, <laughs> and uh, it's going to get complicated. <laughs> so um, there also, this would be great if, if all the bamboceros, if, uh, if we work together and say, hey, I'm in this region, I have this, or I can send you those seeds, you can send me this seed, seeds exchange, for example, um, or ways how to propagate bamboo faster, for example. I've seen some videos of people, specifically in Colombia, uh, just cutting the guadua, the entire trunk, just putting it in the soil, uh, putting some soil on top of it, coming back four months later, and you see like five heads <laughs> of, of the guadua, then cutting them and planting them apart. I mean, that's pretty cool if that works, right? Of course, that's possible if the soil is really like good soil, <laughs> and probably if the bamboo is not too old, and you need the knots where then the, the, the bamboo will grow, which is then in the soil. And you need the, the good specific amount of humidity within the bamboo. So not too humid, but not too dry. <laughs> I think that's been a, a really... Okay, I think we have one more question. Any other awesome. question? Okay, we have one more question. JJ, one question. You have been, let's say, exploring this world of bamboo, and one thing that always concerns me is like the maintenance of bamboo. Yeah. I know when you build bamboo, one of the most important things is to have a good roof to protect it from rain and sun. But have you gone into that world to know how, which is the best way, or who has explored much more, like uh, how can be bamboo being uh, protected? Pres in the construction because yeah. we okay. recently saw a conversation uh, from an architect from an engineer and he mm -hmm. said no uh, this structure needs uh, maintenance every year with a uh, uh, with an oil and with honey with honeybee things okay that's a great question uh, regarding construction and preservation of bamboo once the structure is built yeah. correct right yes yeah, okay so <laughs> uh, again here it's not black and white. Why? Because, for example, if you think in Latin America specifically, and we go back 150 years in time, we have bamboo construction, right? People used bamboo, and it did survive for 50, for 100 years, or even 150 years. So basically, um, um, it was possible back then to build something that lasted three generations or depending on uh, just a long time, 150 years, right? <laughs> How did they achieve? Do you have any ideas? Maybe. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Exactly. So um, the, the people, uh, our ancestors before, they had this uh, great thing uh, where they looked at the moon and knew, oh, we are in uh, July, we have now our window of opportunity of five days where we can harvest the bamboo because it's full of water and during this and this hour of the day, it's the best time to harvest the bamboo because it have even more water during that time of the day, during those few days of the months, during the specific months of the year thinking of summer and winter. <laughs> now, why is this um, possible? If you think of um, the, I don't know how it's called in, in English, but um, basically the moon affects the water, right? Um, when you're at the coast, you see how the, the water uh, moves uh, 
at night, um, so it's further away, or in the river also, when you're near the, the, the coast, right, the water moves. And the same thing happens with the bamboo, with all the plants, basically. Um, even it's relevant for your nails or your hair or whatever. So if you want longer hair, you, have, you should cut them, ideally, when the moon is in the right uh, uh, place and you have like a window of, of time of a few days every month. <laughs> and it's the same thing with bamboo. Now, if you cut it there, you still have to dry the bamboo because it's full of water. <laughs> it will be even more uh, full of, of water than when you cut it at any other day, right? So um, you always have to dry the bamboo, ideally eight weeks or more. Once the bamboo is dry, um, there are several uh, um, techniques to additionally enhance the bamboo. So there is like, uh, you submerge a bamboo in a, a salt water um, a mix, um, depending what is available, of course. Some people, in some places on the planet, they just submerge it in the, in, in the sea, because the sea is salt water, you know? El mar. <laughs> like for uh, uh, four weeks or one week. Uh, there are like really a lot of different um, uh, options there. Other put them in a giant oven and cook the bamboo. <laughs> so we're talking about 20 meter long oven where you cook the bamboo poles and basically uh, any uh, organism who's in there and any sugars, it breaks down because it gets cooked. Basically, the, the big uh, challenge there is what? The bamboo, if you harvest it, not according to the moon, you'll have sugars in there. Why do you have sugar in the bamboo? Because the bamboo needs energy. It grows super fast, so it has lots of sugar. <laughs> sugar is the fuel of the bamboo, right? So um, that's good. We want the bamboo to grow, right? <laughs> but then, of course, we don't want the bamboo to deteriorate. And here is the tricky thing. We don't want the sugars to be in the bamboo. Now, when the bamboo is full of water, there is very little or almost no sugar there. That's why harvesting in, in, in the best moon makes it so much better. And, and that's what they used, like what our ancestors used before. And, and this knowledge has been like almost forgotten. <laughs> almost. <laughs> but here we are talking about it in 2024. <laughs> so, um, yeah. This is a, a very interesting topic, and um, I always have to go on the internet to, to really research uh, what are the best days, specifically where you are, because where you are on the planet Earth, depending if you're in the south or in the north, um, will be different according to the moon and all that. Um, so uh, there is some research there, but um, it, it makes sense. And um, I would really um, recommend to have a look at it, of course, on an industrial scale, if you build a huge bamboo thing and you need, like, let's say, more than 1,000 bamboo poles, it's going to get complicated. <laughs> but uh, for uh, smaller structures, um, I've built structures which have survived over eight years like that. I've put uh, nothing on top of it in tropical region. We have termites. We have everything there. The bamboo is still there. My wood is uh, almost gone, but the bamboo is still there <laughs> because I did harvest it on the, on the right uh, time. So, um, yeah, this could be one natural solution. And, of course, on the, on the uh, modern solutions with oils or uh, gasoline, or uh, um, there are, like, lots of other solutions there. Even in Japan, there is an amazing solution where they burn the bamboo, literally. They burn the bamboo with a flame, it gets carbonized, but just the top part of it around, right? And, and thus, um, it, 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 it closes this bamboo. Um, that's a, a Japanese technique. I don't remember the name, but um, this helps also. Just don't burn it too much because then you have <laughs> charcoal, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, there are many options. Um, bamboo preservation, really super important uh, topic. If you want to seriously build with bamboo, why? Because if you take the energy, the time, and build something, you want it to survive the maximum of time. And as you said before, we need roof, yes. But we also need to be sure that the, eventually any sugars 
which are in the bamboo uh, are not there once we build the structure because this is going to be like a food source for all the insects, for all the termites, for all the little hungry uh, um, uh, animals, insects there which uh, can enter the bamboo and will start to eat the bamboo, of course, because they are hungry. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Well, JJ, it's been a real pleasure to to have this conversation, to have your presentation and to have this Q&A. We're really, really grateful that uh, you made time to be with us today. And we look forward to having many more uh, conversations in the future. Thank you so much, Sergio. Also, um, uh, for me to be here, this has been exciting to, to share inspire and, and, and share some info from other podcasts mostly <laughs> and uh, continue to learn. Today I learned some things about hemp also so this is uh, always a win-win ideal, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah and um, looking forward um, I will share this uh, presentation and those questions in a blog post and on uh, of course YouTube Think Bamboo and on the website Think Bamboo uh, and um, I don't know if you want to share some words about the, the workshop you're having right now at ICAVA in Colombia, maybe. Uh, just a few sentences, if you'd like to uh, share. I think this is like you started already a few days ago, right? Yeah, so we call it the Bamboo Lab. We're based in, a, in, in the San Blas Valley in Colombia. Uh, the, our whole project, the whole territory is called ICAWA, and the Bamboo Lab is... Uh, something that was um, had been evolving over the years. We're in generation five of the Bamboo Lab, and this is generation five. <laughs> and over the years, uh, we started first, uh, um, let's say, or with our passion for bamboo and our passion for architecture. Both Al and I are architects, and and we had a um, a real passion to build with bamboo and create sculptural architecture, and. We also felt a calling to open that process and, and have a shared experience, have a, have a, have a space of co-creation where like-minded people from around the, the world could, could come together and, and build together something beautiful and, and exchange um, energy, exchange information, exchange, uh, well, and, and share, you know, share in all sorts of ways around the, 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 the let's say, a, a creation of a, of a small community, you could say, over a few weeks. And um, um, there's, let's say, uh, in addition to a whole, let's say, aspect of it, which is the co-creation of a structure in bamboo, uh, we, there's also a whole other kind of stream, in uh, which is people that are, or all the participants kind of bringing their own design ideas and developing design ideas around the world of, uh, or the, 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 the material of bamboo. And, and kind of hopefully uh, feeling empowered to move out into their own lives, their own, uh, you know, um, home uh, countries or wherever it is that they, that they want to, to create in the future and to allow these beautiful ideas around bamboo, sculptural architecture, sculptural form to, to um, you know, to imbue their, their, you know, the future of, of humanity really wherever that may that may awesome awesome so uh, this is ongoing like uh, we're in the middle of the bamboo lab right now um so it's a three week uh this generation five was a three week it is a three week uh, uh let's say process and we're kind of yeah we've begun week number three and okay. actually on saturday is a big culmination we have a big celebration we've invited a community of friends and like-minded people from around the region all the way to the big city that's Medellin, which is probably three hours away from here. So we expect a, you know, a nice gathering of like-mindedness to celebrate what we've created over the Bamboo Lab. Beautiful. So I hope you guys are going to continue to have an amazing time there and I hope you have a great celebration and uh, all the best and let's stay in contact and plant bamboo. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> bye bye. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>